Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the GBYWN Australia podcast. I am your host, as usual, Aston Crude. And here tonight, surprisingly to both of us, we managed to, uh, we were hanging out earlier and then we just decided, fuck it, let's have some beers and do a bit of a podcast. I'm talking to former two-time ICWS heavyweight champion, WCWA heavyweight champion, SPWS heavyweight champion, ICWS hardcore champion. The accolades go on and on and on. Ladies and gentlemen, the cannibal, Dan Zeppelin. Yeah, hey, go I've got to say right now, actually, you didn't introduce yourself as the 11 time. Uh, no, no, you know. Yeah, you do that every time. I do it most times. And I made fun of you for it today. That's probably why I didn't do it, because now I've got a complex about it. I'm worried that oh. everyone's just oh. expecting me to say it every time. So. Oh, you're shaking things up. That's yeah, good. I'm, Keep change, fresh. I'm changing shit you got up. fresh man. material. I've got to change shit up. That's the way. It's how, it's how I roll here on the GBYW in Australia podcast, you know. It's, it's expect the unexpected. That's what I said back in XCW. That's what I said back in XCW. That's true. So, Dan, back in the day, how did you get into wrestling? Um, you mean into wrestling in general? Just like as WWE? a fan. Yeah, just as a fan. Um, I went to my friend's house in year six. I would have been, how old? 11? 10 or 11? Um, and, yeah, he was into wrestling. He had Fox Hill at his house. I didn't. So, basically, whenever I went to his house, we started watching wrestling. Okay. I loved the typical 11-year-old wrestlers, Rey Mysterio. Sorry, oh, not yeah. 11-year-old wrestlers, the people that 11-year-olds, 11-year-olds love. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, Rey Mysterio, John Cena. Um, really? All those, John all those, Cena? Yeah, all those cringe worthy wrestlers. Yeah. So your first memories of watching wrestling was with John Cena? Yeah, basically. Wow. Well, more Rey Mysterio, I think, at that stage. I was like, yeah, he can flip, he can, he can run fast. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Big Matt Ray Mysterio fan. Didn't expect that. I was expecting like Jeff Hardy. I was into him later. Okay. Um, later on, I looked up videos of uh, WWE on YouTube because yeah. uh, I couldn't watch at home. So that's the best I could do. And I found a lot of Jeff Hardy clips because of all his crazy spots and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I got into him later. Right on. Um, so obviously, like your brother and his mates are wrestling fans. Um, they're they're older than you, aren't they? Like DJ and all yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, two so, years older. So did you hang out with them a lot when it was just like hanging out on the weekend? Or were they just like kind of do their own thing and you had your own group of friends? Or how did you come into the fold with that group of friends? Um, well, my brother Chris, he was um, involved with them already. He was friends with them uh, through high school, obviously. And he'd gone to this, uh, you know, thing. I heard something vaguely about wrestling before, but I didn't. me and him didn't really do the same thing. So I didn't really know what it was. But um, then when I was coming into high school, uh, 2008, um, he basically let me know that there was a wrestling thing sort of going on and DJ and stuff like that were interested in having me along because they heard that I was into wrestling. Oh, okay, cool. So, um, yeah, one day I went and met them at the the school library uh, (laughs) for the first time. Really? Yep. And, uh, yeah, we just talked from there and and basically they, they were keen to have me along. You struck up a deal. Sign yeah, the contract yeah, sign the there, contract. Right yep. there in the library. <laughs> yeah. So are these like serious discussions? Alright, this is our, our idea. We want to bring you in to the UWF. So the UWF had already began at that point. Yeah, yeah. They'd already done two shows, I think. Okay. Um, just one per year, I think. So it wasn't like a regular thing by then. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, the show I debuted on was when it started becoming a regular thing. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Well, I didn't yeah. know that. Um, interesting. So... Um, you join the roster, uh, your first show. It doesn't say on the ICWS website who your first match was against, but you, you debut as a guy called Voltage, yeah. uh, which is basically Dan Zeppelin. But um, yeah, yeah. first of all, why the name Voltage and uh, who was your first match against? Um, I honestly can't remember where Voltage came from. Um, I remember looking up online what cool wrestling names should be. Okay. It was probably something rubbish like Yahoo Answers or something. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was just trying to find ideas and I had like Cyclone and, you know, rubbish like that. Typical, um... We had an XCW wrestler called Cyclone. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well... Just like a cruise. I just shat all over him, didn't I? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, he's like an 11-year-old kid, it doesn't yeah. matter. And I remember, um, bringing it up with my parents at the dinner table, actually. I was like, I've, I'd written all the ideas on a piece of paper and I was like, which one do you think I should go with? Asking my, asking my parents as if they would know what a good wrestling <laughs> name would be. Um, and yeah, we came up with Voltage. 
I, I don't know why that one stopped, but, you know, okay. it sounded cool, apparently. So uh, Jan and Rob had a bit of a hand in helping you decide? Yeah, yeah, they made Voltage. Um, and first match, that was against Sadistic. Wow, I had no idea. That was against Sadistic. Um, I had never met him before. I had never even heard of him before. Or I knew he was vaguely one of DJ's friends or something. Yeah. Um, it was the first match of the day, our match was. Oh, wow, um, pressure. So, yeah, I'd met him half an hour before, before our match, maybe. And um, he was a really bad wrestler at that time, I'm not going to lie. Um, everyone will agree, I'm sure. I'm sure he'll agree himself. Yeah. He was really bad at that time. So, my first match against him, probably not the best way to debut, but... Um, you know, it happened. It was a fairly terrible match. When he punched me, I would sell it about a second later. Um, As you do. Yeah. I mean, I'd sort of been thrown thrown in there without knowing what I was doing. No sort of training or anything, because no one knew what they were doing back then. Okay, yeah. Yeah. What did UW stand for? Ultimate Wrestling Federation? That's the one. Okay. It's very original. I wanted to clear <laughs> that one up. Hey, yeah. we're all called XCW, so... <laughs> yeah. No problem there, man. Um... Okay, so uh, I think from what I read, you, you you wrestled a few more shows. You lost a couple of matches here and there just to begin with. Um, but as the shows are going along, how do you feel you're um, adjusting to going from you know being just Chris's younger brother now to maybe fitting in and being more part of the group? I loved it. I freaking loved it. Um, I was becoming one of the main main. Uh, you know, I was within the group with DJ Eli and all those um, all those older guys. Probably every, at least once a week, we would meet in the school library to discuss UWF and... Um, <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, and we would annoy the library teacher all the time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we, we would meet once a week in the library and talk about it. We would discuss cards, characters, everything as if it was, you know, almost like a professional thing, taking it really seriously. Oh yeah, I know that. Yeah. XCW sleepovers with a big yeah. Yeah. sleepover. Okay, let's yeah. plan the whole years of storylines and then we'll yeah. forget them the next time. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh, we wrote everything down. So, yeah. yeah, we were one step ahead of you there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I got to be really good friends with um, DJ and Eli and stuff. Everyone was really happy to, to have me along. If I remember correctly, Wicked Nick James was sort of in a different friend circle who didn't really like the whole wrestling thing, so he didn't hang out with us so much. Kept it a bit quiet. Yeah, he kept it a bit quiet. Gotcha. Um, um, yeah. I, I always find it interesting to see the parallels with when we were doing it and then when you guys were doing it. It's kind of like, even though we didn't know each other existed, we did the exact same yeah. things as each yeah. other, which is yeah. why when I eventually joined ICWS, I was like, wow, this reminds me of when I was like 14. Like, yeah. This is great. Yeah. Um, so, um, it was a, I guess it was more of a group effort to um, to come up with storylines and all that. Was there, yeah, was there one guy in charge or was it more like a... Not really. Um DJ, Eli, and Chris were the main guys. Um, uh, excuse me. Um, but yeah, they, they were totally happy to take on ideas and suggestions and stuff from myself and, um, you know, whoever else was there at the time. Yeah. Uh, so soon after this, you form a group called, uh, or a team called VCA with Chad Yo. What's VCA stand for? That was the Voltage Chad Yo Alliance. Oh, okay. Yes. That's, that's cool. Well, um, no, fairly terrible, but <laughs> it was cool at the time. Cool at the time, yeah, for sure. We had our own, uh, our own, what do you call it, pose and everything. We both posed together. Oh, excellent. Yeah. So you, you come up with all that as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so why was this uh, alliance formed and um, what was it like working with Chad? Yeah. Why was it formed? Um, Did you guys just get along? Question. Or? Yeah, actually, yeah, we, we became really good friends. Me and Chad Yo were... He was probably my best friend, I would say, um, while he was still in Australia, because later on he moved away to, to America, back where, he, uh, back where his family came from. Yep. Um, but yeah, it was really good working with him, because he was a very good friend of mine, so it was good fun. Um, got into all sorts of mischief in the storylines. Were I mean, you heels? We were heels, yeah. We were sort of the um, the rebel, sort of, you know... Mocking everyone about interrupting matches and stuff oh, like, like that. Like a DX. Yeah, kind of yeah. So a bit like that, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, so, I mean, this alliance unfortunately doesn't get to go that long because Chad Yo is leaving IC, well, UWF at the time to move back with his yeah. family to America. Um, yeah. But I want to ask you about 
Chadio's influence on your career early on, and because um, I know you always speak very highly of him. Yeah, yeah, it, it was definitely good being under his wing. I mean, it feels sort of weird saying under his wing because he'd done just two shows before, <laughs> like two crappy shows. Like he's this big veteran. Now, yeah, yeah, exactly. But it seemed like he was like he knew what he was doing and stuff. So, um, and obviously he had been there before me. Yeah. So yeah, it was really nice working with him. As I said, he was a great friend. So he, yeah, it was it was good being under him. So you felt maybe you learned a little bit from from working with him and yeah yeah he was he was quite um, charismatic and stuff so I think that definitely rubbed off on me a little bit. Okay, cool. Um, so soon after his departure, you formed the Carnage Crew with Wicked Nick James, which is a very infamous little uh, tag team you had there for a while. Where at yep. one stage you were both holding both the championships. Yep. yep. Um, so what's it like working with Wicked Nick James? That was. That was really good as well. That was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, because me and Nick became really good friends as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, probably after Chad left, we, we started becoming good friends. Um, so, yeah, that was really great working with him as well. Yeah. Um, getting into all sorts of trouble again in storylines. It was sort of a similar type of um, alliance there. Like you had with VCA. Yeah, yeah. And um, you, they had a little bit of a feud with Chris Eplin. Yep, sure did. Um, I remember locking him in inside DJ's house as if we kidnapped him. That was <laughs> God, that was one of the storylines. Carnage Crew has kidnapped the general manager, Chris. <laughs> okay, there's a, uh, an issue with Silly String involved. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, me and Wicked Nick James and someone else. I think someone else was there. I can't remember now. We sprayed Chris Zeppelin with the Silly String, and he fell to the ground and uh, sold it like he. Yeah, he was knocked out. <laughs> Um, you know, that big, tough, silly string stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, you just fall <laughs> over if you spoke to that, apparently. <laughs> don't know what happened there. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe Chris was drunk. Who yeah. knows? Um, so I know you had a bit of a, a feud with Easy Money of uh, MC Cruel and Nitro. Yep. Which we all know is Daniel Johnston. Yep, yep. So um, during this time, you're obviously improving more and more as a wrestler. Um, what's it like working with, you know, a guy like MC Cruel who's a little bit more advanced... I think he's done. Maybe he'd done a little bit of training at this point. I'm not sure. Maybe not. But uh, um, not at that stage. No, that he he did. He started training a bit later. Okay. Um, um, but yeah, he was definitely advanced above most of us. Um, I guess because he was just such a big wrestling nerd, <laughs> yeah. and I mean that in a in a positive way. Yeah. Um, yeah. He he knew what to do. He knew how to sell, how to bump, how to you know do um, sequences, stuff like that. Yeah. So it was really good work with him. Um, I would still say to this day he was probably one of my best opponents I've ever had. Yeah. Um, you know, keeping in keeping our skill level in comparison. You know, yeah, today yeah. the matches don't really hold up, but yeah. back then the matches me and him had were freaking amazing for the time. Yeah, cool. Um, is there is there a because DJ's mentioned this several times in his podcast about Eli and his attitude? Um, did he ever rub you the wrong way a little bit at times? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We we were actually really good friends. Me and Eli were great friends. Um, then yeah, eventually this is way later in the timeline, but we eventually um, di- uh, disliked each other. You could say, I guess. Yeah. Um, and shit went down there. But I'm guessing we'll get that get into that a bit later that, in the that, podcast. That would be later on yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of cover like his attitude, kind of. Yeah. At the time. DJ yeah. always said that he was always like, whatever he, whatever was going to be happening, as long as he looks good doing it, then he was happy. Yeah, so it was what quite is like in it that. For yeah. MC Cruel, basically, is what DJ said. Yeah, it was basically like that. But, um, but yeah, me and him were really good friends. We we got on well. We would hang out a lot outside of wrestling as well. Yeah. Um, and whenever we had a match coming up, he would come over to my house. Um, and we would practice for for hours doing sequences and stuff. Oh, and wicked. um. Yeah, I would say that really um, stepped up the game, probably for ICWS in general, or UWF at the time. Yeah. Um, you know, people sort of putting sequences into their matches rather than, you know, for reversals, someone would get someone into a submission and then another person would roll them up, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, whereas before that, it would just be like, oh, punch in the gut, now the other guy's in control. Now he does some moves, then you punch him in the gut, now you do yeah, some moves. Yeah, that's it. So, um, yeah, I think we we were quite... We changed the game, really, with um, a lot of the work that we did. We were, 
yeah, we gelled really well in the ring. Cool, man. Or on the base, I should say. Yes. Or not even the base at that time, on no. the on the couch mattresses. That was something that I, I, I think I forgot to type in there, just um, the, uh, I guess the evolution of UWF and, and the different locations you were at. Um, was it always kind of difficult trying to keep a, a solid venue and have a good you know, base to wrestle on? Because I've seen initial early bases that you guys wrestled on, and it's completely different to what you you guys have now. Yeah. Well, when we first started, um, it was basically, as I said, couch cushions and, you know, whatever soft crap we could find, basically. Um, And then um, after that, we'd throw a tarp over it. (laughs) Oh, yeah. So that would look, uh, you know, totally professional. Yeah. Um, But then, yeah, eventually um, we... We found some uh, some decent foam padding, which worked really well. But it was quite squishy and thick, so you would when you you know when you stepped on it, you would squish halfway through it. Okay, yeah. So that was it was good for bumps. I mean, it looked terrible, but it didn't you didn't feel it when you yeah. bumped. Um, but yeah, it was really hard to walk on and stuff. So that probably helped us start doing bigger moves and stuff because we could bump on it, but also hindered us because we couldn't really move on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but I do know, you know, maybe not around this exact time, but. Soon, soon after this, it does end up being moved to your house. Um, yeah. So I might be skipping ahead in the timeline a bit here, but um, did it take no, long it, for your dad to um, be cool with having shows at your house? Yeah, no, it's, it's still in the same timeline actually. Um, okay. No, my from what I remember, my parents were pretty well cool with it. Um, they they might have been a little hesitant at first, but it didn't really take much convincing. Um, because they had sort of dropped us off at the shows and stuff like that before, so they knew they knew most of the boys, they knew their parents and stuff like that, so they knew that no one was sort of dodgy and, yeah. you know, everyone was cool to hang out with. So, um, yeah, they were pretty happy to host the shows and have everyone around in the house and stuff like that. Yep. Um, so you you win the hardcore title. It's your first championship. You defeat MC Cruel. I'm not sure if the memory's too vivid for you, um, but you, you win a, your first ever championship. Um do you recall it, and if so, like, did it mean a lot to you to finally get a championship around your waist? Um, where did I win the title? Can you remember which match was it? You re- you, you wrestled MC Cruel. I don't know what event it was, though. Yeah. Um, um, for the record... While you're thinking, I'll try and do a bit of research here. Yeah. For those who don't know me very well, I have a terrible, terrible memory. Um... Before we did a podcast, I wanted to watch all the recaps so I could hopefully jog my memory. But Okay, um, you kidnapped Chris Zeppelin and then Wicked Nick James sanctioned a match in which you defeated MC Crawl to win the Hardcore Championship. Okay. Um, so I'm thinking this is 2008. So oh, look at the the match that comes to mind was that Close Encounter, the third event from when we started doing it like full-time, mm-hmm. uh, by which I mean monthly. Yeah, um, that was the quite uh, popular match between me and MC Cruel. Uh, it was a ladder match. I don't know if that's the one where I won the title, but I want to talk about that anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a really good match. Um, Chadio was involved as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was just a lot of good spots. Um, everyone was really impressed with that match. There was people diving off ladders. Um, oh, really? MC Cruel. Uh, sorry, Chadio hit uh, MC Cruel with a super kick on the ladder. Everyone freaking popped for that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was probably quite an influential match at the time as well. Yep. Um, was that the match where I won the the title? Can you have just you found out a yet? Look here, there is a uh, voltage defeated MC Cruel in the ladder match become number one contender for uh, the number one contender. championship. Right, that one. Um, maybe it was earlier. Road to Redemption. I've heard that one before. Um, Painstaking against MC Cruel on that one. Uprising. Uh, it, it wouldn't have been earlier because I didn't win the title that early. No. Up- Uprising was my debut show. Gotcha. Okay. Nitro, no, Knuckles, no, no, no. Big Mac and Blaze in a triple threat. Beat Big Mac. Fuck. <laughs> hey, it was 2009. Just anyway. All the shows here. <laughs> On the on the old uh, terrible ICWS website, which hasn't been updated for what four years or something. <laughs> Mental, yeah. Um, where's the events? You know, Chris Zeppelin used to pour hours and hours into this website, 
but um, did anyone even really visit it? <laughs> well, we did. <laughs> you know, about five people in the federation did. Uh, apart from that, I think we might have got that one view per year. So at this point, the first show of two thousand nine, you win a match to retain the Hardcore Championship. Bloody hell! See, Reload. The start of two thousand nine was uh, Reload. If I remember correctly, which was when it was branded ICWS instead of UWF. Gotcha. Okay, um, maybe those results actually aren't on the website. Yeah. Because the last show of this year, you defeat Big Mac in a match, but the first show that's up there yeah. How does not state. Anyway, sorry anyway. for you listeners out there for the confusion. We're just trying <laughs> to figure out when he won the Hardcore Championship, but you did defeat him for the Hardcore Championship. I sure so, did. did you end up mentioning if it meant a lot to you? Um, yeah, it did. I remember it did, actually. Um, I remember making the belt myself, actually. Um, I spent quite a few hours into making that belt. Did you make that hardcore belt? The hardcore belt, yeah. Oh, the, that, um, man, that's a really good title. bluish one. Yeah, yeah, I was quite proud of that, actually. Um, I think I coloured it in with textures, those, those little ink, shitty ink pens that you use in primary school. Yeah. So it was pretty good for that, if I may yeah. say so myself. It's a nice belt. Yeah, good effort. Um, <laughs> I think we still have that one, too. We do, yes. Recently, we... the ICWS championship was thrown in the bin at the end of a show as part of the storyline and no one got it out yes so now it's literally at the rubbish tip now and it's probably gone. you know disintegrated by now trust me I, I've, I've been through heated arguments with DJ about that situation uh, yeah, I think we're I, okay now I think I ripped I was, into him a little bit I about that I was not happy well. about the whole situation um, but yeah. that can be something we talk about a little bit later yeah, yeah. Um, okay so from there you uh, defend your championship successfully over the likes of Big Mac Blaze and Johnny Rocket <laughs> Uh, um, so I just, I just want your quick memories of, of Big Mac, Blaze, and Johnny Rocket, one after another. Your memories of them as wrestlers and a part of RCWS and UWS. Yeah, yeah. I, I love thinking about those three guys, um, <laughs> particularly Blaze. Blaze was a friend of mine since primary school, um, yeah. I'd be, so I'd been friends with him for years. Um, he knew I was getting into this wrestling stuff, and he was also into wrestling because he had a wrestling game on his PS2. <laughs> okay. He, I don't think he, actually, he watched wrestling at all, but he watched, he played it on his PS2. Um, so yeah, he eventually got into that, and um, he uh, he wrestled in those big, um, what do you call them, fat pants, they were called? Oh, those the, big, the wide... Big um, raver pants? Yeah, like, raver yeah. pants with the, the bright, glowy tape on them and yeah. shit. Ugly pants. Yeah, ugly. ugly, ugly pants. Yeah. Um, Big Mac, he was he went to the same high school as us as well. He was a classic fella. Um, I loved hanging with Big Mac. He, From what I heard, he was quite a funny dude. Yeah, he was a very funny dude. Um, and he term, wasn't a wrestling fan. No, in terms of wrestling, he, I don't think he'd really seen a wrestling match in his life. Um, he thought Randy Orton was, uh, was his favourite. So, <laughs> you know, that says something. Um, but yeah he'd never really seen a wrestling match in his life but he did have a lot of fun it was a lot of fun wrestling him Um, I don't know how he managed considering he wasn't a wrestling fan at all yeah but um, yeah he was a lot of fun actually yeah Um, Johnny Rocket he (laughs) he was a lot of fun as well because he'd just zip around the ring so fast he was um, doing flips and stuff like that um, he really was a Johnny Rocket. Yeah, he sure was. Um, he looked a bit funny. Should have had a clown gimmick, to be honest. Um, so yeah, he was a lot of fun to watch. Well, wrestling. he is infamous with all the boys from later on because you know we'd look at the alumni section and be like, "Who is Johnny Rocket?" <laughs> yeah, that's this, amazing. Like this, this big... uh, pasty white kid with a big red afro. <laughs> oh, I love just thinking about it. Um, but yeah, know, he, he why, was a good kid. Do you know why all three of them kind of fell off the map in ICWS and disappeared? Do they just all lose interest? Um, well... Because I know Sadistic left because he hurt himself in a practice match. Yeah, he, he broke his wrist. Um, I remember I was taking it. <laughs> it was at my house and I was taking a shit while it happened. Um, <laughs> and I, Yeah, and I heard through the, the bathroom window, you know, Gareth was screaming and shit. And I was like, oh, he, he surely he's just like selling. He's just, you know being an idiot or whatever he was screaming and then yeah I came out and um, mum was like oh yeah we've got to take Gareth to the hospital or you know whatever <laughs> whatever happened and I was like oh well shit <laughs> um, and there we were thinking that, that was the end of his career well yeah yeah that's another story for another day but yeah uh, Blaze and Big Mac they uh... yeah Blaze um, I don't really know what happened to him um, I think he just sort of dropped out of the friend circle, you know, he started meeting other people, he was interested in other things, um, yep. I think he just wasn't too bothered anymore, his weekends were getting busy, so, you know, he couldn't really do. come to shows, yep. uh, and Big Mac, 
probably the same thing, really. Um, you know, he wasn't really a wrestling fan to start with, so the only thing keeping him there was um, the social factor. Yeah. Um, he, he still loved hanging with us, I'm sure, but um, I think he did cricket. That might have um, mm. interrupted. Um, something like that. Anyway, yeah, he yeah. Just, I'm sure he would have loved to have stayed, but yeah, he... Um, and Johnny Rocket. Johnny Rocket. Um, well, the shows used to be up at his house, um, which was about an hour drive from me. Were which, they the ones on that big lot? Yeah, the big um, dirt lot, like the red dirt. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that was his house. So, um, yeah, basically he did the shows until the base uh, was taken to my house away from his house <laughs> okay so after that he I think he just couldn't be bothered coming out to the shows really or maybe he didn't have a way there or whatever so okay. yeah he just dropped off because he either couldn't get there or he couldn't be bothered <laughs> fair enough just wanted your your thoughts on some some of the guy I guess forgotten yeah uh, well no not school. forgotten no, not forgotten from you I guys think, but forgotten yeah. from some of the newer guys who aren't aware of the history of ICWS yeah. when I think about ICWS I th- those are strangely those are probably some of the three main guys I think about yeah. I think because they, well, Blaze was a good friend of mine, and the other two were just entertaining. So, and they were just sort of classic to that era, like because they don't wrestle anymore. Yeah. So when I think about us, it'll be us. I sort of think about them. Yeah. Think of that classic era with those yeah. guys that you you started with. That's kind of yeah. how I feel yeah. about XCW. Even though everyone remembers it from 2010 and how good it was then, I still always remember those early days, which are yeah. always meaningful. Yeah. Um, all right, so uh, soon after this, you, you're, uh, I think you lose the hardcore title to Big Mac. Um, yeah, he and... attacked me after I'd already had a match, I think, so that was a bit rude. But yeah. Um, you, you lost the title, but then soon after that, you the, the Carnage crew breaks up. Um, yeah. Do you know why you guys broke it off, or um, was um, it just like maybe to do something different and have a feud between you two? Yeah, good question. Um... I can't remember, to be honest. Um, I think we, in storyline, we had, you know, small things happen between us and then, you know, gradually we get more pissed off each other and shit like that and then eventually we, you know, want to beat the shit out of each other. Um, I can't remember the actual events that happened there. Maybe it might have been a case of you were improving quite a lot and they thought, well, like Chris and Eli and DJ might have thought, well, maybe we'll we'll do this thing where uh, Voltage and Nick James break up and then... Dan Zeppelin goes for the championship. Yeah, yeah, I think that was a factor of it. I think it was mainly, or not, maybe not mainly, but some of the purpose was it to was to push me into the main event scene. Yeah, and I think soon after the breakup, there was one match, and I think then there was a rematch, and you finally became ICWS heavyweight champion uh, by beating Nick James. So uh, memories of winning the heavyweight championship for the first time and getting the chance to to wrestle you. Your second tag team partner, Nick James. Yeah, that was. I was really proud of that. I was happy with that. Because um, when I first started the whole wrestling thing, I didn't really expect much of it. It was just sort of a thing my brother's friends were doing, and I was tagging yeah. along. And then, yeah, um, you know, within no time, really, I was. Um, you know, they loved me. I was. I was doing really well, and they they booked me to win the championship. Um, I made that championship as well myself out oh, of card, cardboard and tape. Oh and, man, you make uh, good belts. I need thank to you. get you on thank board you. to make some. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't be bothered. Is, is. You have to pay me. I have to pay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, that was really good. I was, I was really proud that I was, you know, not only doing well as a wrestler, but sort of accepted and you know good friends with all the people in the group. You know, yeah. they they respected me. They trusted me to to do what I could in the. Federation, all yeah. that fun stuff, yeah. Cool. Uh, I know you have two two kind of title defences. You have a little bit of a rivalry with um, Nitro. I think I don't know if he's Declan Diamond at this point. He might be, but... Um, I think so, yeah. Um, you had a couple of, of matches with him, which he looks back on fondly, and he says that they were some really good matches yeah. um, for the time. Yeah. Um, MC Cruel as well, some more great matches between yeah. you guys. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I know that there was one instance where it was supposed to be a triple threat between Wicked Nick James, you and DJ, and you guys went out there and did the match, and apparently it was so bad that you guys decided to do it again, but Nick decided to say, okay, I'll sit out this one, you guys just go and wrestle. Do you have any memories of that? Um, um, having a dreadful three-way dance with them, but then stopping and having to restart against DJ? 
I honestly don't remember that, no, but no? I'm not surprised, because back in the day, we would we would film film the matches sort of like a, a scripted TV show. Yeah. So if we did something badly, we would just go back and do it again. So we didn't do it like a proper live wrestling show. It was it's all more like, take, it's yeah, all... we would um, do a match, and then if it was bad, we might do it again, or we might just even, uh, you know, film some odd moves and put them into the match that oh, we already okay. did, and, you know, crap like that. So it was all mainly just for that music video at the end. Yeah, then. yeah, pretty much. We didn't really try and have solid wrestling matches around that time. Okay. Um, it was probably around... I think we're getting towards mid to late 2009 at this point. Yeah, it was, it was around then when we started taking it more seriously, where we, we were putting on wrestling shows rather than just, um, you know, sort of TV scripted sort of things. Yeah. Um, so during this time, you guys are quite involved in, um, I can't, a Breakfall? Breakfall, the, Breakfall, the, 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 the online the old, forums. The online yeah. online yep. forums. With some of the guys over East, do you guys maybe like a little bit of feedback on your stuff, even though yep. in comparison to what they're doing, it's... It's really hard to compare because yeah. over there they were doing so many fucking amazing things as wrestlers. Um, but how were you guys received on, online, and um, who were the who were the main guys that really kind of uh, helped you out? We were not received very well at all, really. I mean, there were, there were some guys that were quite respectful, but then there were some other guys that um, absolutely ripped shit into us. <laughs> okay, um, and it it was probably fair to be honest because compared to them they were doing you know pro level stuff even even yeah. better than that yeah. you know whereas we were sort of just flopping around on old cushions in the front yard yeah um but yeah the the nice guys were um oh, Tommy Taboo he was definitely one of them um what was his name I was going to say Lynx Lenny Lenny <laughs> Lynx. uh Brinks he gave us a lot of feedback but he was a jerk in the way of doing it but you know he did help by but he um, still does that now so yeah. he hasn't changed <laughs> yeah yeah but um he was helpful in giving us a lot of feedback okay um, was rusty kind of helpful or um, not so vocal i think he he commented occasionally but i don't think he was too vocal at that stage um but yeah we we basically idolized those guys um a bunch of cars going past so. yeah rush hour um <laughs> at what midnight um <laughs> Yeah, we basically idolised those guys. We basically we were aiming to be like them, do the amazing stuff that they were doing. You know, get a wrestling ring and you know do wicked flips, crazy moves, and shit like that. So back then, you were even thinking, "Oh, it'd be great to get a ring." Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But that never really was going to come to fruition. Yeah, well, we had the base. Um, you know, once we built the base, we were sort of thinking of ways we might be able to put ropes on it and stuff like that. But there was not really any feasible ways that we could put ropes on it without concreting poles into the ground and yeah. shit like that which you know understandably my parents didn't want to do no way yeah um so yeah we we never really came up with anything there obviously okay um all right well um uh, back into what you're doing in icws bundaberg comes in mm. um do you know who brought bundaberg in and how that came about um if I remember correctly, we met on the EPW forums. Oh, okay. Yeah, on the uh, online EPW forums. Um, yeah, we... Because I used to be quite active on there, um, chatting about various stuff, so I made a few friends through there. And it then, seemed like... It, I mean, sorry to cut you off, but it seems uh, like uh, with a lot of people that did come into ICWS, you were the one that kind of brought them in yeah. you, you were the first one to make contact and yeah. start dialogue with them about coming yeah. in yeah that that would be true yeah um, let's see there's Bundaberg Mike Docano Jaddy Flame Clint Marshall um, you of course which led to Nick uh, what was his name Nick I was going to say Nick James Nick Ariel Nick Ariel that's the one um, and you know all the other XPW like boys SPWS as well SPWS yep. yeah so it seems like that was almost your job yeah, Talent pretty scout. much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did seem to work like that. Yeah. yeah, I guess was that like kind of an unspoken thing, like Dan Zeppelin, you know, oh Dan, you have to be the one to find these people, or oh, did no, it just ha just happen? It was nothing like that at all. Like we weren't really looking for anyone. Um, we were happy with what we got, but I just happened to to find these people and they were interested. They saw what we were doing. They were like, "Fuck yeah, we'd love to do that with you." Cool. Um, so with Bundaberg, it was uh, the forums. Yeah, so we met on the EPW forums. Um, I think we we started talking on MSN, um, the old the old chat application thing, whatever you might call it. 
Fucking MSN Messenger. Old school, old school. Yeah. Um, Gotta love MSN. And yeah, we, we became pretty good mates. And, you know, Backyard Wrestling eventually came up, check this out, whatever. And yeah, he said he was keen to do that, so he uh, he got into it, basically. Well, he, and it, it's quite obvious from day one, he's very uh, very athletic and he's yeah. very um, just straight on to it, you know? Yeah, very talented, yeah. Um, and immediately he comes in for a rivalry with you. Um, I think he did a little bit with uh, Eli and yep. a couple of things here and yep. there, but um, uh, what are your memories of Bundaberg and ICWS? I know he had a problem with having footage being put online. Yeah, yeah. Well, originally it was all all fine to start with, of course. Okay. Otherwise, he wouldn't have started with it. Yeah. Um, I loved working with Bundaberg. As I said, he was very talented. Um, he was willing to do pretty much anything. Um, he was quite innovative. He he wanted to do moves that we'd never really done before. Um, he was good at coming up with spots, and he knew psychology quite well as well. Yeah, um, yeah he did, he just knew what he was doing in the ring, basically, without ever doing it before. Yeah, um, it's just obvious to me the way that he even moved around was so yeah so different from a typical backyard wrestler. Who's very you know that you can tell that they're thinking as yeah. they're trying to you know thinking what's coming next. Whereas he seems so natural. Yeah, with his yeah. movements and ability, yeah. and very charismatic as well. Um, yeah, he he was quite shy in person, um, but yeah, as soon as he came through that curtain as Bundaberg, he was so charismatic. Everyone loved him. Came out to land down under. How can you not like that? Yeah. Um, but yeah, eventually he um, had a bit of a downfall um, with his mental health and stuff like that, which was unfortunate. Um, we had to actually take down a bunch of videos um, online because he didn't want himself to be online anymore. Um, yeah. yeah, so that was unfortunate, but it was totally understandable. Um, everyone understood the the situation there, so that was all cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, that was um, unfortunate, but it's all good now. Doesn't yeah. matter now. No. Yeah. Um, uh, I want to scale back a little bit because I forgot about one thing uh, towards the tail end of two thousand and nine. Mike mm-hmm. Delcano debuts. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so you had did have some dialogue with the TWA boys, I believe they're called TWA. Oh, um, something like that, the, the old tramp, trampoline... Trampoline wrestling thing, wasn't association it? Yeah. or something like that, yeah. Um, which they go into very much detail um, <laughs> in their podcast I did yeah. with them last night, um, which was very interesting to hear their point of view as to why it took so long for J.D. Flame and Clint Marshall to join. Yeah, yeah. But um, Del Cano was the first to come on board, so what mm-hmm. were your... Uh, how did you get in touch with them, and um, and how did you uh, bring Del Cano in? Um, that was, again, through EPW. Um, we're not sponsored by EPW here tonight in this podcast, but I must thank them. Um, they So I was a member of EPW at that time, so I was at all their shows. Um, those three boys were also at whatever show it may have been, and I think we had a brief conversation, if I remember correctly. I don't know why. It's maybe just because we were the same age and yeah. whatever. Um, and then I think it was Mike found me online, or maybe I found them. We we found each other online somehow. Yeah. And, yeah, basically started talking from there. We showed each other our, our backyard wrestling stuff, and um, obviously ours was a bit more advanced than theirs was. So, yeah, they, they were really keen, or at least at that stage, Mike was really keen to, yeah. to get into it. Well, from what I gathered from the... I don't want to spoil too much because I know you haven't listened to the podcast from J.D. Flame and Clint Marshall yeah. yet, but from what I gathered was their point of view was, oh, cool, we got we found some more guys for our roster. Yeah, yeah, it was when, a bit like when that. When it was more like, you know, they, I mean, last night they obviously were like, well, fuck, you know, how wrong were we, <laughs> basically? Yeah. Like, um, no, we were guys for their roster, basically. Yeah. Um, but that's why JD Flame and Clint Marshall held out so long because of the pride of no, yeah. we're TWA, you know, through and through, and then yeah, you know, yeah. obviously Del Cano went there first, and then they were angry at him. Oh, how could you yeah, betray right. us? And, yeah, you know, typical teenage stuff. Yeah, but, um, that makes sense though. Yeah, yeah. Um, but basically, I don't think many of us ICWS guys were interested because we'd done a bit of their triumph wrestling before, and. It just doesn't work, really. It's just rubbish. You yeah, know, yeah. you can't bump properly. You can't really move properly. All that stuff. Nothing yeah. looks impactful. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, having the base, we just weren't really interested. Um, but we were very keen to have them along to us. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, obviously that worked out very well. <laughs> which, which did take some time, but eventually it happened. Um, 
So you are having a few roster problems. I know uh, towards the tail end of 2009, early 2010, you had shows where there was only maybe about three matches each yeah, show. Yeah, we were getting very skinny um, around that stage. So, we were a bit worried that we might have to, to start giving it up. Yeah. Um, so was there a bit a bit of fear that ICWS was going under, Bundaberg's kind yeah, of left, yeah. Uh, yeah. Knuckles is only here and there? Um, you still got you, Wicked Nick James... Eli and DJ is the mainstays, but it seems yeah. like everyone else is kind of phasing out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know if it would have stopped, but it it was very disappointing for us to sort of... We were on such a high note with so many people in the roster, and then everyone was dropping off, and, you know, we were doing shows a little less frequently, I think. Um, so it was very disappointing, and we probably were a bit worried that we, we might stop it happening, um, you know, stop doing shows. But... Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's um, what's happening with Schwar at this point? The, it seems like there's a little bit of uh, interaction between you guys. Um, yeah, I think Eli might have started doing a bit of training for them. Yeah, yeah. So um, some of us found out about Schwar, whatever way. Um, Eli was very keen to start training. Um, he started getting involved with them. Started doing a few training sessions. He was still wrestling with us at that stage. But um, obviously, being a pro wrestling company, Schwa weren't too happy about that. Mm -hmm. um, and then, because Eli was doing it, DJ wanted to go and do it. Okay. Well, not because Eli was doing it, but, you know, encouraged him to do yeah. it. Um, so, yeah, around that time, they started getting into that, um, which was obviously two of the, the founders of UWF and ICWS. Yeah. Um, Potentially leaving. So, I mean, you're already having roster problems as it is, and now they're probably thinking we, we, we yeah. might go do the pro thing. Yeah, yeah. So now it might just be you and Wicked Nick James, one yeah. set of cards. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. luckily around this time, you do get Del Cano in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that brings in a bit more, but we also bring in SPWS. Yeah. So they come on board, and that must have been a fresh, breath of fresh air to have. You know, oh, yeah, definitely. Not just El Cano, but now two more guys who are yeah. two big dudes. <laughs> and I'll just mention the story of how I met SPWS, actually, because it amuses me a little bit. Okay. Um, so we, we both went to the high... Sorry, we, we three went to the same high school. Um, they were three years older than me, I think. Um, I wore a Parkway Drive shirt to <sighs> the, the carnival because it was free dress, yeah, which yeah. is a band shirt for those of you not with it. Um... And first thing in the morning, I walked up to school. The first day, I met Alex Stone as well. Oh, he goes, okay. hey, cool shirt, man. And, or, you know, whatever. <laughs> cool and shirt, then, man. Yeah, and then later on, at the end of the, the school carnival, heading home, I walked past um, a friend of Josh and Luke's, and they were hanging out the front. And they they mentioned a comment about my shirt as well. Yeah. And so I stopped and started talking to him, blah, blah, blah. And, yeah, that's basically how I met them. And if I remember correctly, I think wrestling came up in that first ever conversation. Really? Yeah. I don't know how. But, um, but yeah, I think the first time we ever we ever met, we, it was, you know, set in stone. Excellent. Um, so it was, obviously wasn't too long after that, you know, you guys ended up going to wrestle at the SPWS shows. Yep, yep. Um, so what was that like? I mean, I believe that happened before they'd even come to ICWS. Yep, yep, sure did. Um, they had... Two shows, yeah. Hardcore before, beginning yeah, and crash yeah. course, yeah. That's it. Um, yeah, that was a lot of fun going to their shows because it was just so rough and raw. Like, yeah, it wasn't ICWS where it's, we. This is bare bones backyard yeah, wrestling. Yeah, it's um, you know, sort of. Uh, uh, excuse me. Um, sort of like the classic old American shit you would see on YouTube. Yeah, you know where people were just hitting each other with shit and you know slamming each other on the grass and crap like that. And it was, yeah. it was so fun. Um, Eli and Nick, I think a little yeah. bit Nick, were not really too into it because, yeah. um, you know, there wasn't much padding. A lot of it was just rough and they, you know, like they're more, they were more into their technical wrestling and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. But yeah, I, I loved it. It was so entertaining. It was good fun. It was really good getting to know those guys. Yeah. Um, the first show, we went down to the park in a Falls Count Anywhere match and <laughs> I wrestled down at the park, which was great. <laughs> um I always remember the shot, the camera shot of um, Chaos walking up the hill going, SPWS is mine, after he's won the Falls Cat Anywhere match. <laughs> <sighs> so yeah. good, good memories. I just find it um, 
so hilarious that Wicked Nick James is on the initial SPWS roster. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's, you yeah. know, of all people, he was on their first show. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and they have Crash Course, where um, the main event for the first F- SPWS champion is actually Killing What Chaos versus yeah. Wicked Nick James, which yeah. uh, I also f- just feel a bit humoured by when I think of it. Yeah, so the first F- SPWS show was very popular. Well, not very popular, but we everyone really enjoyed it. Um, the second one, it was good, but people weren't, like, the matches weren't really that great. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was just sort of on a lower standard than the first one. So I don't know if that contributed to why there was no more SPWS shows. But um, I'm pretty sure um, there was supposed to be, there were, well, in, in ICE's podcast, he goes into very much detail about how there was supposed to be more SPWS shows and there was supposed to be more interaction between ICWS and yeah. SPWS. There was yeah. even a tag team match booked at an ICWS show for you and MC Crawl to face Chaos and ICE in yeah. a match at SPWS. But yeah, yeah. I believe they weren't able to do any more shows because Chaos had to move house. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, like, these matches with you and them kept getting pushed back and pushed back because of no yeah. SPWS, but... Yeah, um, yeah, we didn't really have a place debut, to do it. They did debut and they did make a bit of an impact, didn't they? In ICWS, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Their first match, Twisted Metal 4... Was it Twisted Metal 4? Did they have a match before then? They they yeah. definitely debuted on a Twisted Metal, I'm pretty sure. Because uh, I thought they, they, they debuted, challenged you guys, Chris Eplin booked the tag match for the SPWS show, and said, well, while you're here, you guys can wrestle in a singles match. And then at Twisted Metal, they did the rematch, and they did another hardcore match. I'm pretty sure that's how it went. Um, yeah, you're probably right there. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah, um, but they certainly made an impact with their hardcore matches. Oh, absolutely, yeah. That And you guys a... must have just been like, oh man, fuck. Yeah, we were like, who the fuck is in our backyard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they were going absolutely nuts with chairs, and uh, that was the first time light tubes were ever introduced. Yeah. Um, and the only time at, in, in that era. Um, mm-hmm. Light tubes weren't used again for a long time. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, you've got a lot of balls, was... man, because you were one of the first people to step up to play and be like, I'll, I'll wrestle these guys. Was was there reservations yeah, yeah. throughout the locker room? People weren't sure if they wanted to wrestle them or not? Yeah, if I remember correctly, yeah. Um, a lot of the sort of mid-card guys, like, um, you know, your Big Mac and Blaze, I'm pretty sure they were still there at that point. Yeah. Stuff like that. They didn't really want to wrestle with PWS. <laughs> you know, these two big dudes that are, you know, big tough dudes, stuff yeah. like that. Um, but yeah, I was fine with it. I think I had talked to them quite a lot online and stuff like that. So I was yeah, getting and they're two be... big teddy bears, man. Like... Oh man, it's... the matches with them, they look the most brutal, but you don't feel a thing. No, you don't. It's just, it's amazing. Um... Except when, uh, Chaos gave me the, um, what's it called? Chaos Theory? Yeah, the Chaos Theory. Um, and when I was wrestling as El Cazo Grande, spoilers, oh. I am El Cazo Grande, my back basically folded <laughs> in right. half. you're like an accordion. Yeah. yeah, yeah, which was my fault, it was not his fault, I bummed it fucking stupidly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my back was literally sore for about two years from that. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, I think it was from that. I, um, <laughs> yeah, that was not a good, uh, bump. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so let's, let's get to, to me coming on board you of course um, yeah well it has to we have to talk about it yeah we have to talk about <laughs> you don't we oh uh, well fuck <laughs> you're gonna win the championship in this podcast yeah probably <laughs> um wasn't my decision though um <laughs> but I, I believe you got in touch you and just mike got in touch online um uh, you, it's pretty vague memories here but just mike had just started an xcw youtube account yeah that's i believe you familiar. discovered yeah, us yeah, yeah, yeah. through there you yeah it would have been through mike's account yeah. and then you gave him he gave you sorry my Your email address to admin MSN. and he yep. let me know yep. there's another fed in perth did you yep. know i'm like what really yeah and then you know i got into contact with you so yep. there was a bit of chat with me and you and i spoke to eli a bit and yeah um, I, I think I literally just googled Backyard Wrestling Perth. I think I was looking to see if our stuff would show up. Oh, okay. And I found some of you guys' stuff. Because um, you see, before that year, we never put really really put much online. Yeah, yeah. Point. So um, that's perhaps why we didn't find you before, or yeah. maybe we wouldn't have anyway. And, but I'm surprised that I didn't find you guys, because yeah. I was very still very much into Backyard Wrestling. Yeah, at the right. Time and, yeah. Um, 
2010 was the year XCW finally came back properly for a solid year yep. of uh, five yep. or six shows we had. And at the time, when I found out about you guys, I was like, oh my God, like I could actually go wrestle somewhere else. It's yep. something that I never yep. thought I would do. Yeah. Um, so to be in contact with you, I was so excited, but I was also kind of nervous. I was mm. like, God, I've got to, you know, I've got, maybe they think, oh, he's been doing it for so long, he's going to be so good, and yeah. you know, I've got to make sure I actually am good, so... Yeah. Um, so I did talk with you for a while there, and at first I thought, okay, maybe I probably won't do this. Um, but then really? I think at first I was like, I, maybe I will, maybe I won't. I'm not sure. I didn't know that. Um, but then eventually, I think one night I was just like, you know what? Fuck it, let's just do it. Yeah. Hey man, when's your next show? I'd love to wrestle in the next show. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what your plans were for that show, but it ended up being booked me versus you in a non-title match at Twister Metaphor. Yeah, well, I think most of us were sort of equally surprised and excited that there was another fed in Perth that was going. So, um, yeah, I think as soon as you you expressed interest in being on our shows, we sort of changed what whatever plans we had yeah. to accommodate you and, yeah. and all the rest of XCW. Yeah, and it was really cool. So, like, okay, Twisted Metal Force started... You guys waiting for me to arrive. I'm a bit late to the show, but I yeah. get there. Classic crew. Um, the, the, the weather's not the best, but, um, yeah. you know, I meet you. We talk a little bit about what we're going to do in the match. and um, what, what, what was your first impression of me when we met? I, I, felt, I felt awkward because I didn't know you. Okay. Um, but, like, I was like, oh. What did you think of my hair? Because I had very long hair at that point. Oh, well, I was like, well, he's got t- good taste in music. So, oh, okay. Yeah, so we're going to get along. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the SPWS boys you know, probably liked me because I had like, you know, Motley Crue yeah. stuff Yeah, on, you were so. wearing all your, um, all your metal gear back then. Yeah. Weren't you? Um, so I think my first impressions of you were, um, he's shy. Yeah, um, it would have been. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I think when I was talking to you, I felt awkward because like I would, I would have to keep asking you questions to keep you talking. Yeah. Yeah. You um, would otherwise have. Otherwise yeah. the conversation wasn't going to keep going. Yeah. I was very um, shy back then. Yeah. Uh, but like, uh, immediately I was like kind of like I guess I, I got a soft spot for you straight away because I was like you know this guy is willing to just have me come in and beat him yeah and I was cute at his show yeah thank in you his fed and he's the champion he's letting me beat yeah. him like I was like you know this is a quite quite a nice thing for someone to do for me when they yeah. don't even really know me yeah um, but I came in um, I cut a promo it wasn't that decent I could have done better but I think it was just me being nervous and not really sure what to say yeah but um it was a great promo from memory that was I all mean, right you know oh you know if you've had probably haven't heard of me um you must have been under a rock for the last 10 years or something. Yeah, i remember Living that in line a cave yeah, yeah in the last yeah. 10 years um uh, uh my name's taser this is just mike the tag team champion of xcw and blah 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 but like yeah. i came out i already had heat from the crowd and i was yeah, like yeah and you can see me discussing to mike with during my entrance, I was talking to him and I said, yeah. you know, they're, they're booing me already. I haven't done anything wrong. <laughs> Wait for me to say something wrong yeah. first. Well, I think back then, not many people were too good at promos. Probably DJ and Eli were the yeah. main two promo guys. Um, apart from that, no one really did too many promos. Well, we did, but they were mostly terrible. But I just, uh, w- you know, what was it, what was the ICWS's reaction to, to meeting me for the first time? Like, what was everyone thinking of me? Because I don't really know. Well, I don't really know either, to be honest. Um, but I think people were excited, but perhaps like, cause not. I'm, I'm not several years older, sure. you know. Yeah, yeah, that that was a factor as well. Of course, most of you guys were what four or five years older than most of us, more yeah. than that even. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. no I've got I, facial I, hair at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think most people were were totally happy for for you guys. Um. Because back then we. We pretty much discussed everything that was happening between everyone. You know, it wasn't just the bookers that knew what was yeah. going on. Everyone knew what was going yeah. on. So, um, yeah, it's not like people were genuinely surprised by you coming along, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think everyone was, was fairly comfortable with it. I don't think there was any problems from okay. that. Okay. Um, anyway, so we have the match. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, it starts pissing down with rain when I've got you in a figure four leg log. <laughs> yeah. So we're drenched, and um, because of that, I go. I have a mind blank. 
Yeah. So I'm like, I don't know what you want to do, dude. Should we end this now? And unfortunately, it ended a little bit sooner than I think we would have wanted it to. Yeah, but, um, yeah. I guess it was giving them a taste of what we could give them the following show. Yeah, you um, could put it like that. <laughs> and just thinking now, I I find it weird how I, I just trusted you to just have a match with you. Yeah. Because I was, how old was I? 15 maybe? 14 even? Probably 15, We're I think. We're talking 2010 here, so yeah. five years ago. How would have been year 10, which would be 14, 15, I think. Okay. Depending on which month it was. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, thinking yeah, back it's... to it, it's a bit weird how I just trusted a random fella to um a grown come into my much, yeah like... come into my backyard and have a wrestling match. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, like uh, I thought it was a pretty decent little battle. I got to oh, hit yeah. a few moves. Yeah. You got to hit a few moves. Yeah, and I immediately felt comfortable because that base was pretty cool. Oh yeah, yeah, and I, and I like, think we gelled fuck. really. I think we gelled really well straight away. Yeah, I think um, I, you, always... you've got you've got the power style. I was. Uh, basically a high flyer back then. Yeah. Um, and it reminded me of wrestling Nick Ariel pretty much. Yeah, well, that um, works for you then, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, so I already kind of had a little bit of experience of wrestling a, a guy quite considerably smaller than me. Yeah. Um, but I always felt from day one, you and I just had instant chemistry. Yeah. I don't think we've ever had a bad match at work, except for one yeah. exception, which we'll get to. Yeah, um, and and not even just in the ring. Like, I think straight away, as soon as we started talking on MSN, we were basically great friends. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Back then, we would talk almost every day, I think, yeah. didn't we? Yeah. yeah, you know, I'd always double-click your name as soon as I logged in. Yeah. Like, hey, man, what's yeah. up? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty cool match, and um, Twisted Metaphor was also significant with um, Declan Diamond and MC Cool leaving. Yeah. Uh, that was that yeah. was their last match, which is kind of... Uh, at the time. <laughs> yeah, at the time, which is kind of um, shit. All right. Luckily, we managed to get SPWS Del Cano, now we've got Taser. Mm. Yep. Um, so... Um, I don't know if at the time I was thinking I'm going to come back. Hopefully I will. Hopefully they'll ask me uh, back. And then eventually uh, I get a message from Chris and you saying, oh, um, well, if you're keen, we'd like you to beat Dan for the title next show. Yeah. And then that's when it really sunk into me. I was like, wow, like I only wrestled one match here and they're already trusting me yeah. to be their champion. Yeah. Do you know why you guys decided that was the the best idea at the time? Well... I think, as I said before, we're all just so excited that there was another Fed, and you know, we'd we'd already started the storyline now. Um, I, think... I don't know if at this time there was going to be an invasion. I don't know if we yeah. actually had discussed there was going to be an XCW series. I think, I think we brought it up, but you know, it wasn't sort of locked in or anything. No. Um, but I think we sort of thought that was that was sort of the only way to go. Really, like we couldn't really have an invasion, and it's not a major thing, you know. Yeah. If we're going to have an invasion from another company, it's got to be you know, the storyline of the year, basically. Yeah. And therefore, it's got to involve the main title. Yeah. Um, so, you obviously were pretty cool straight away with, okay, yeah, no, I reckon he should be the one I drop yeah. it to. Yeah, And on top of that, obviously, your, your wrestling skill. You were a great wrestler, so, you know, title material. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, all right, so, uh, well, let's get, get to it. Uh, Animosity 2010. I thought it was one of the matches of the year. Um, and I know Chris Zeppelin once said at some point, I think Dan versus Taser was actually match of the year, but mm -hmm. um, it was a really good match. I was really proud of it because we totally won up to the previous battle. And I yeah. um, remember when we had the thing, I had you in my shoulders and I lifted you up and in yeah. midair you hurricane run into me. That yeah. was really cool. Yeah, we did a lot of wicked spots, didn't we? Yeah. Um, we, we, yeah, I'm really proud of that whole series, actually. Yeah. You, I think we brought the best out of each other. Yeah, for sure. Um, so also, um, following show, you team with Chris yeah. <laughs> in a <laughs> handicap match against me, which was supposed to be a, um, actually it wasn't the following show. Sorry, the following show, you went to your feud with SPWS whilst I had the match with Johnny V at uh, yeah, ICWS. Yeah. Um, yeah. but, um, actually let's, let's, let's get to that. So, um, you, you're wrestling, uh, Dark Ice, I yeah. believe, Joker Driver. Yeah. <laughs> That is a that is another one of the classic moments I think of when I think of ICWS. That was probably the first, well, maybe one of the first like really brutal sort of technical moves. What do you call it? Yeah. That that uh, anyone had done, especially like a neck bump back yeah. in those days. Absolutely fucking nuts. And being the first move in the match, like the match it opener, was flawless. It was yeah. And if I may say so myself, we did a fucking perfect job of it. Yeah. 
and that was a pretty cool match. And um, yeah, so, the rest of the match was solid as well. So, yeah, and uh, you and Ice too always had great chemistry. Oh, definitely. Yeah, he's probably my favorite opponent. I would say. Excellent. I don't think we've had a bad match. No, I don't. I can't. No, every time, every yeah. time you've battled, it's always been great. Yeah, we just know what each other is going to do. Yeah. Um, as I said before, he's a big teddy bear. I know I can trust him. Yeah. Um. All right, so we get to Pain for Pleasure, where you team with your brother Chris in his only match that he ever has against me in a handicap match. It was supposed to be a tag team match against the Heartbreakers, but yeah. um, John was unable to make the show, um, which would be a recurring theme from there on. <laughs> yeah. um, but your memories of teaming with your brother and, and maybe you know, kind of planning out the match with me, you and him, and you know, did you ever say to him, do you really think you can do this? Like. Not really, no, but it was absolutely crazy that he was going to be in a match. I'm still surprised to this day that he did that. Because um, I made a point of saying, like, look, if I'm going to be here only for a little while, um, I want you to, in this feud, I think you should wrestle me. Yeah. I think you should, if you're going to ever do it, now's a better time than any. Yeah, and I think you are probably the reason that he did it, I th you know, if you didn't, if the whole invasion thing didn't happen or whatever, I don't think he ever would have got in the ring. Um, no. Yeah, and no one in UWF, ICWS, ever thought that Chris would wrestle. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, it must so, have been a, must have been a hugely hyped up match because oh, everyone it was, was like crazy. on the edge of the seat. Oh my god, we're going to yeah. see Chris actually wrestle. Yeah, and when he came out wearing the kick pads and yeah, all that, fuck oh, man, so it was good. so good. It yeah. was oh, that yeah. again. That's another thing I think of when I've remember ICW. Yeah, that was incredible, man. And it was an incredible moment. No one ever thought they would see that. Yeah, and um, the Tornado DDT does to me. Oh, uh, fuck's sake. <laughs> that got moment of the year. Insane, year. insane. Yeah, um, <laughs> someone doing a Tornado DDT one moment of the year. That's how <laughs> insane Chris Wrestling was. Uh, um, it's, it's just something that shouldn't have happened. And I think he did really good. And, you know, oh, I reckon so deep well. down, he probably always wished, oh, I'd love to at least have done it. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. know. I mean, I guess he just thought, oh, well, I'm not suited really physically to do anything like yeah, that. Yeah, probably. But, uh, I've, yeah, I think you're right. He probably did want to do down. something like it. Yeah. In, in to, you know, to some degree. Yeah. Um, so. And I think what we did was obviously absolutely perfect. Yeah. That, that was the way to do it with him. Yeah, and uh, I was very proud of that. And straight off the bat, you know, this is four shows I've been in, and uh, the storyline is going along so well, and I'm so proud of it at this time, and I'm proud of everything that I've achieved so far. Um, and then I believe from Pain for Pleasure, we get to the big uh, invasion. Um, but before we get to that, I'm going to scale back again. Um, You're all have, over the place tonight, aren't you? Gotta, I, I, I keep forgetting certain things. And I, I've Flame, just got the image of Chris in kick pads in my head now. <laughs> uh, JD Flame debuts at Twisted Metal 4. Oh, yeah. Um, so just thoughts on your initial thoughts on a young JD Flame um, in his uh, attitude. He, I liked him, but he was pretty hard to handle. Um, uh, that was my opinion. Um, not really. <laughs> Um, yeah, he was, um, I don't really know how to say it, like, he, he was quite hyperactive all the time, he, he was very, he said things that people didn't really want to hear, you know, stuff like that, he sort of got in people's faces, like, outside of the ring, you know, when, when you're a character, it's alright, but he did that all the time. Basically, his gimmick of telling everyone to shut your face and, you know, being a big heel and stuff, he was sort of like that in real life. Mm -hmm. um, people liked him, but he, you know, everyone knew he was a bit hard to handle at the time. Okay, but decent heel, very decent. Oh, in the ring, he was really good. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was very decent heel. Yeah. I will say. Um, yeah, and al almost straight away, he was. Um, he did an amazing job. You know, people knew he was. He was there to stick around. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, going back to ICW's affliction. We do do the full-scale XCW Invasion where we beat down on... We actually beat down TWA, which is amazing. Like We beat up JD Flame, Clint Marshall, and you Mike. You did too. Mike I, was the I never realised that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah I didn't yeah. realise it until last night, and I was laughing. Yeah. About how, like, we didn't actually end up really beating up ICW, so we just beat up TWA. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Never noticed that. 
Um, but yeah, that was a pretty cool moment. Um, but Clint Marshall debuts, and um, immediately, I believe, everyone's on board with the push for Clint Marshall. Um, yeah, yeah. I guess, obvious from day one, he's quite good. Pretty much, yep. Yeah. He came straight in, and he knew what he was doing. Um, he was a very impressive wrestler straight off the bat. Um, us bookers, as you might call us, uh, which was DJ, myself, and Eli, and Chris. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically we all we all wanted him to to get to the top fairly quickly. Excellent. Yeah, we knew so, what we wanted to do with him. Well, that's pretty cool. It's kind of like as soon as there's a new guy on board, you guys know we've got to build to the future at some point, so let's start building him now immediately because yeah. he's showing good promise. Yeah. Um, and okay. I, I think part of that was the excitement of having new people again um, because we were getting all these new people and almost everyone was great, so it was... Yeah. Um, but yeah, on top of that, Clint was a was a standout at the time because he could pull off all these wicked power moves, which most people couldn't really do at the time. So. Yeah, and he just had the charisma and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um. So before we get to XCW versus ICW at Halloween Hell, uh, you get to wrestle at XCW Retribution. It's a night show that we have in Mount Lawley. Yep. And you face MC Cool for the ICWS champ. Oh no. Were you champion at this point? Uh, who I knows? think this was before you dropped the belt to me. I think you did defend the title against him because I remember you having the belt. Yeah, actually, think yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, yeah, I came out with the title. Yeah, but it, it must have been pretty cool for you guys to to get in at the tail end of XCW and wrestle at the night show, which you probably never thought would ever happen again. Yeah, I, I was really stoked that I got to be a part of XCW. Um, not although at the time I don't think I really knew the scale of it because I didn't really. I did know that it had been gone for 10 years or however long. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, looking back on it now, I appreciate it more that I was a part of it. But, yeah, at the time, I it, it was great as well. Um, my first memory from that is um, entering the, the arena, and there, there was a decent crowd there, and I went to high-five a bunch of people, and they just didn't really know who I was, so I don't think they responded. Oh, okay. they, they gave me a bit of an awkward, you know, yeah. crappy high-five. and yeah. Yeah, and I was like, oh, all right, it's a bit of a different crowd, isn't it? <laughs> I didn't really know how to work work a different crowd that I wasn't friends with, if you know what I mean. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, but I do de- distinctly remember uh, you were very thought highly of by the XCW guys, and I think a couple of them, I think maybe John might have said, oh, it's a shame that we're wrapping things up soon because he would have made a great addition to XCW. Yeah, right. And it would have yeah. been interesting to see what we could have done with the Dan Zeflin and XCW. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't even imagine um, how cool it would have been to have you in the Extreme Carnage division with Nick yeah. Ariel and Johnny yeah. V and Just Mike. Yeah, that and, would have been insane, yeah. Yeah, it would have been really cool. But I'm glad to hear that, though, that they thought highly of me. I did sort yeah. of feel that, because... Um, like, I, even I, 22 I did... Horny said, like, oh, that Dan Zeflin was, like, pretty good. Like, yeah. Like, he's well, better I've... than most of us, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think online I talked to yourself, obviously, John, Mike a little bit, and I think I even talked to Vaughn a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely appreciated them um, sort of giving me compliments, because, as I said, I I didn't really know how to work a new crowd, so it was good having sort of a few friends that I could try and work with there. Yeah, and you did have total respect from... Pretty much everyone, all up and down um, the roster. Um, Cheers, guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, also during this time, Wicked Nick James is losing interest. Mm. I believe he... he Big. Pardon me. After Big. Twister Metal 4, when he beat the uh, play group yeah. in a squash match. Um, from there, basically, everything he did from then on was pretty much put over the new guys before he was leaving. So he lost to Mike Del Cano, yeah. he lost to Clint Marshall. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah. And he was pretty much weaning himself off to being out of ICWS. Yeah, basically, um, yeah. So what are your thoughts on you know, losing another one of those originals where really you know, you, you've lost MC Krull, Declan Diamond, now Nick James, and now pretty much, you know, ICWS is pretty much you, Chris Zeppelin, and... Yeah. Uh, all the new guys you've brought in yeah yeah was, I was very disappointed to see Nick go because I think we were still very good friends at that time yeah um uh, um yeah so it was disappointing but um I guess being good friends with him I could see why he didn't want to do it anymore 
So um, I can't remember why he didn't want to do it anymore. I think he was just losing interest, basically. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think also the excitement of having a lot of new people sort of helped um, help that. Yeah. Um, you know, even though we were losing an original, we still had a whole bunch of people for the future. So yeah. It wasn't like we were going to die or, you know, a yeah. whole lot was going to change. It was yeah. just unfortunate that Nick wasn't interested anymore. Okay. Um, so let's get to it. This show is probably one of the biggest shows there's ever been in backyard wrestling in this state. The uh, XCW vs. ICW series, Halloween Hell 2010. Not only Ooh. that, but we get SPWS to have a SPWS hardcore death yep. match. Yep. We also get Mykonos' debut, yep. which was pretty cool, against EQG. Yep. Um, yep. Thoughts also on uh, young Mykonos coming in for his debut match. Um, I thought it was weird when I first met him. Um, we talked briefly online. Again, here's another guy that I I sourced. Oh, <laughs> another one. Um, from yeah, Danzig. I found him online again through YouTube because he was doing what was that crappy thing called? MWF. MWF. Andrew Wrestling. Yeah, Federation. him and Three Dog. Um, yeah, so I found them online again, started chatting, and he was interested to join us. He lived about an hour's drive away, um, so he was hesitant at first, I think. Um, but yeah, eventually he came along. Um, he walked up with his dad. I thought they were both slightly weird when they first came into my house. Um, but yeah, no, they were cool. They were cool. It was, he was fairly quiet to start with. Yeah. But um yeah, he was he was nice and you know, it was good becoming friends with him. Um and he was really fun to wrestle in his first match actually. Yeah. Um he was quite impressive. He again, sort of like Bundaberg, he knew what he was doing almost straight away. Yeah. Um he obviously had a bit of experience wrestling on a crappy mattress. I was uh, a swag. Yeah, in a way, <laughs> yeah. Um, in MWF, but um, yeah, as soon as he got on the base, he just he was flying. Yeah, yeah, he was. He, he, it's just from the get go, you could see that the guy had it. And, yeah, he, um, just natural. I don't talent. even think he realised the magnitude of the show that he was actually wrestling on. Yeah. It was actually like, you know, the two main federations in Western Australian history are having yeah. a series, and he's probably just like just thinking it's just a regular show. Yeah, if I, I don't think he knew too much about us or probably anything about you guys to yeah. be honest um, I think I you know I came in contact with him and he might have watched a couple of videos and he was like oh yeah that's alright I'll do that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he really knew anything about the history or you know how long we'd be going how long you have been going yeah. stuff like that um, alright so let's get to the series um, yeah right. great to see JD Flame and Just Mike have a decent little match uh, to kick things off um, seeing just Mike wrestle JD Flame is just oh, that. Nuts. you never thought you never why, why would that happen why would that happen how you know the insane two, the two mid card heels are against each other yeah. basically but I love seeing that yeah and uh, that was pretty cool um, and from there uh, unfortunately Johnny V did not make the show so Again. I had to fill in for him to wrestle Declan Diamond yep and when you watch the match back, I don't even know if I even realised it but I barely even gave him anything oh really I think he hit a clothesline and that's it <laughs> yeah. Poor guy. I'm, yeah. I'm surprised he didn't um, have a big hissy fit over that. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, yeah, it was basically a squash match, and I don't know. Oh, if... right. That's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, I, I felt, you know. Whose looking, fault was that then? Looking was that your back, fault? I feel bad about it, but I didn't even realise at the time that he barely got any moves in. I thought yeah, he did, right. but he didn't. Was so. that your fault, or he, d he just didn't just, call anything? I think or? it's just a fault of us just having to do this on the fly because we were yeah, expecting to wrestle enough, Johnny yeah. V. But initially, it was actually supposed to be Mike Delcano versus Johnny V, but he. Yeah broken his uh, um, collarbone or wrist or whatever it was. Yeah, wrist at um, that time, I yeah, think. His yeah, his wrist, yeah. Um, yeah, he, he uh, didn't he do a backflip off a tree at school or something and he broke his wrist? <laughs> Probably, Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Something yeah, like that, anyway. I mean, imagine Del Carno versus Johnny V, that would have been excellent. Oh, Jesus, if I could see that today, I right. would, we missed I would out pay on them it. 50 bucks each. We missed out no on more. it. No more. And uh, unfortunately it never happened, but... Uh, from there, we get to see this incredible match between Diffuser and Clint Marshall. Oh, um, ridiculous match. That was just they above met, and what, beyond. An hour before the match, not even? Yeah, they didn't even know each other. Yeah. And, you know, Zibby was saying in his podcast last night about how they went out the front and they practiced some things. Yeah. And, 
you know, um, Bonner was getting Zippy to do things he'd never done before, like when he had yep. him in the electric chair and he turned around and gave him the Hurricane yep. Rana. Yep. You know, Zippy had never done a Hurricane Rana before, but yeah, Bonner it was, completely it was, trusted It was insane him. how uh, Zippy, Clint Marshall, had was sort of playing a bit of a high flyer in the match. Yeah. Because prior to that, he was one of the biggest uh, powerhouses in the Fed because yeah. he, he could lift everyone and, you know, he was fairly tall compared yeah. to the rest of us. Yeah. Whereas, you know, obviously when Diffuser came in, he was looming over Clint Marshall. And, yeah. You know, he was the stronger one. So it was interesting to see Clint Marshall adapt to that. It was really impressive how well he did it as well. Yeah, and I'm really proud of uh, just to see Diffuser go out there and yeah, and, and against this young kid who's... This is, this is actually Zibby's third match in ICWS. Yeah. Yep. So to see them go out there and have what was voted as match of the year was just incredible. Oh, nuts, yeah. And um, it really kicked the series into high gear because, I mean, Dirty oh, Flame yeah, and Just Might yeah. was good. Um, me and Declan wasn't so good, but that the match Fuser was. And that's when everyone realised, oh shit, this is yeah, going to be something yeah, big. Yeah. And then what do we get next? We get Dan Zeppelin versus Nick Ariel. Oh, oh shit. shit. So, so um, we had wrestled once before when I was as El Caso Grande, right? No, that happened. Was that the, after? That happened the year after. Oh shit! All right, ignore me. Don't Once mind I'd me. come back, Nick decided to come back, but he only ever had that one match against EQG. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah, Don't yeah. mind me. I'll go now. <laughs> um, but, yeah, wrestling Nick Ariel. Um, I loved that you guys were playing up the whole tit-for-tat yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Kind of one-up one another with the... Even though he was a bigger dude at that point, but yeah, you were the Nick it, Ariel of, of ICWS. He was the Dan Zeppelin of XCW. Yeah, in our own feds, we were both a high flyer, but when we met, he was, you know, almost double my size. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, we we both played the high flyer, um, and it worked really well, as you said, tit for tat. We, um, yeah, I think we planned that one really well. The psychology of that was quite a good match, actually. Yeah, like which is you... not something I was really known for. Psychology is not my strongest yeah. point, because um, I tend to lose myself in in matches. I don't really know what to do when, because I, as I said, I lose myself. So, and I think Nick really enjoyed the fact that he was actually bigger than someone for once. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> And, um, you know, I love the spot where you gave him a, a head scissors takedown, then he immediately gave you a head scissors yeah, takedown. Yeah. I love planning that match with him because it was just so fun, like, thinking about what we're going to do yeah. and then actually pulling it off and everyone was popping and shit. Yeah. It was so good. And, you know, we already had Diffuser and Clint Marshall, but now you guys are continuing on yeah. with the excitement. Yeah, continued the, the level, the yeah. 450 splash. Yeah. Eventually you hit him with the uh, sliced bread and get the victory. Yeah. Um, so that levels it all up at 2-2. It was so fun wrestling him. I would love to wrestle him again. Well, hopefully we can line that up. um, Hopefully. (laughs) Before he hangs up the boots. Um, And uh, the main event is me and MC Cruel, his last ever backyard wrestling match. Yeah. Um, I felt that this was definitely uh, a step up from my match with Declan. Yeah. We had a very solid back-and-forth match, which... um, well, unfortunately, we uh, had to end it in a double count out because mm. um, we could not come to an agreement over who would win the series. Where yeah. you know, ICWS probably should have won, but um, I well, I don't know because at the same time, it was great to put you guys over. You know, rather than you guys coming in and then we end up shitting on you at the end of it. I think it was good to put us both over. Yeah, well, I, think I think that was, was a good cool way to, to end have, it. I think it was cool to have a tie. And yeah, it was kind of yeah. like be like, you know what. We're both as good as one another. Yeah, like, that's it. We 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 all are in agreement. We made backyard wrestling in WA what it is. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I thought that was a good way to go out. Maybe Chris Zeppelin wanted ICWS to win because he felt like XCW had pretty much dominated the feud. But um, you know, it is what it is. And I think um, you know it was a good finish to the to the show. But then after that, I um. I'd already made the decision that I wanted to go to pro wrestling. Unfortunately. Yes. <laughs> I probably should have stayed for a little bit longer, but... Um, well, at, at the time, it was your, your calling, really. My mindset um, had changed. Like, I, I was like, I could actually do this. If MC Krull can be a pro wrestler and he's yeah. only on the shows, I could do it. That's it, yeah. And I mean, as I said, at the time, it, it, was, it was your calling, really. Yeah. Um, and there was no reason not to do it at the mm. time. Um. Obviously, it, it didn't quite end so well, but um, yeah, yeah. No, at the time, it was, it was the thing to do, I think. Yeah. So um, we have this little bit of a, a scrap 
uh, after me and MC Cruel, where you managed to walk away with the ICWS Championship, and I raise your hand and you know show that you are the guy and I'm passing the tor- torch on to you as I go off into the uh, sunset, yeah. as they say. Showing us how good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it wasn't very good um, from memory. We kind of botched a few things. Um, what the the uh, final match? Yeah, that final little yeah. it was like a three minute thing we did after my match with MC Cruel. Yeah, well, it was unfortunate the way it happened, wasn't it? Because um, you, we basically had to cut off the last match of the series because you were going pro. Yeah, there was so, supposed to be a last man standing the following show. Yeah, for you to win the title. Of yeah, them. but because of you going pro, we had to squeeze it into the same show that yeah. the uh, the series was on. Yeah, unfortunately, I was told by Shwa you have to end. Yeah, yeah. This show, so um, I didn't want to leave and vacate the title or anything. Yeah, no, yeah, fuck that, yeah. So I think we did it the best way we could, really. Um, I I think it ended up fine. Um, a lot of people don't like how it happened, but considering we didn't really have any choice, I th- I think it was okay. I the 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 idea I had was um, at ECW's very first pay per view. Terry Funk beat Raven for the ECW Championship in the dying seconds of the pay-per-view because there was only like about a minute and a half to go in the pay-per-view and that match began yeah, um, before right. the, the pay-per-view would go off the air because they were running so far on time. Anyway, I love the, the drama of Terry Funk comes out, you know, he's this, you know, the underdog, no one thinks he's going to beat Raven, but then, you know, within, you know... Uh, a short span of, of, of back and forth brawling he somehow manages to fucking uh, hit his move and get the victory and yeah. um, I always thought that was a really good moment I was trying to recreate that with a couple of minutes between you and yeah, I yeah. I was trying to recreate it there but maybe it didn't didn't happen the way I envisioned but still I, know, it was I, all right. I, I like how it happened I think we did quite well I like it cool you're not really a fan of it? Well, you know, it is what it is. Um, I would have liked... Because a couple of the moves that I did get you to do to me, I kind of fucked them up. Mm. I think maybe I was a bit tired, but... Oh, we were both um, I botched fucked, a little yeah. bit. But I'd, I'd had three matches. You had, what, two? Two, two or three? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. Anyway. I think it was raining as well, wasn't it? No, no, it was all right at that oh, point. All right. Um, but, yeah. Uh, still, um, that's the end of XCW's run in ICWS, and so now you're going to mm-hmm. continue on continue forward into uh, the end of 2010, moving into 2011 with your feud with SPWS. But we'll end it here as at, at the end of part one. Uh, we're getting to an hour and 20 minutes so far. <laughs> so I knew it would be a long one. The same thing happened with DJ. Um, really the, did not uh, feel like an hour and 20 minutes. The, I thought it would be going like 40 minutes. The early UWF stuff being added into it always makes the first mm. part of the ICWS stuff a bit more... Yeah. Um, a bit more longer than than what we usually have with the uh, ICW section with everyone. But um, thank you for no problem, man. doing part one here with it the was interview. Um, thank you all for listening. I've been joined by Aston Crude, the 11-time heavyweight <laughs> champion. I am the cannibal Dan Zeppelin. Thank you for listening. And I just stole Aston's thunder. <laughs> we'll be with you with part two for the ICW interview. I don't know if we're going to record it now. See how you feel. But we might do it tonight. might do it tomorrow. Surprise. So, excellent. Thank you, Dan. No problem.